Before we begin, I'd like to say a special thank you to Vermaiden and his brilliant FreeBSD blog for information on auto mounting and desktop FreeBSD in general. A link is in the description box below. In the previous video, we got the system patched, some updates, and installed a nice KDE desktop. KDE comes with almost everything that you want straight away. You know, you've got multimedia, office, internet, uh, email, it's all there. But there are a few things that we'd like to add, uh, say for instance, um, Firefox or some office applications, etc. So we're going to fire up a console. Just move that down a bit so we can see what's going on and zoom in. And we're just going to go to root. If we issue PKG install Firefox, it's as simple as that. The system will then ask, do you want to install? Proceed with it, yes, of course. And it begins to install. And finished. And it's really as simple as that. If you want to install, oh, I don't know, LibreOffice, it's the same procedure. And oh, I've just noticed at the bottom, I actually automatically updated the icon for Firefox, which is pretty cool. And it pulls down everything it needs. I'm just going to speed this up because it is a large install. And there we go. And it recommends that we add these to the FS tab, which we will do right now. So again, if you go into root. So we're going to go to forward slash etc forward slash FS tab. And we'll just copy that what it describes there. We've already got proc already uh, installed from the last video. So we'll just save that. Issue a mount hyphen A for mount all. And there it is. Dev FS and proc already there. Right, once that's done, we can have a look. And there it is, it's all installed. Very nice indeed. A lot of people don't use uh, full office suites anymore. They prefer an online like Google Docs, etc. But you know, I like to have one installed on a computer. It just, uh, I don't always trust the internet for connectivity and sometimes I want to make sure that I can get things out regardless. So there we go, we'll what's save that. And there's that done. Next, we're going to install two essential items I need for video production. That's Inkscape for the thumbnails, etc. And Caden Live, obviously for the video production. And we'll just uh, go again, fast forward. And close that. It's all done. Now that we've got some of the essentials installed, some useful tweaks which will make the system a bit more usable. So if you do pkg install do as, and edit forward slash user forward slash local forward slash etc and forward slash doas.conf. And we're going to put these very basic um, entries into it. Permit no pass. So it will uh, allow us to go into root without asking for a password. You can obviously change this. And so it requests a password every time if you want. I'm the only person who's going to be using this computer. So it's not a big deal for me. And permit no pass. So this will allow us to essentially allow us to shut down the computer or reboot etc there are plenty of other um, alternatives that you can use and there's plenty of guides online that can help you with that if you need them now we're going to edit the bootloader.com and we're going to add some entries that we want the system to uh, do when it first starts one of them is to cut the amount of time that we're waiting on the main menu which I think currently is nine seconds, and we've got it down to three. Three, because then it still gives us time to intercept the menu if we need to make any changes. But three is pretty speedy. So just save that. And if we now edit the syscontrol.conf, Again, if you need this, these are essential if you want some tweaks on the system to be there when it starts. The first entry we're going to make 
will allow us to mount and unmount external storage devices as normal users. Next is to change the responsiveness uh, from a server to a desktop. And then we're going to disable the system beep. Next, we're going to allow Chromium to uh, access shared memory. And I'm just going to do a little bit here. I What I like to do when I'm making alterations to system control files, I like to just add these pound signs or hash uh, signs just to let you know the entries that I've made. go back into loader.conf and I'm going to add something which will change the uh, graphics so at the top is the default um, orb logo and we're going to change it to the beastie one at the bottom for the more traditional list out there next we're going to add the core temperature sensors if you're running Intel processors if you're running AMD then it's AMD temp now we're going to enable the in-memory file system or temp uh, file Asynchronous input output. Uh, we're going to enable that. Save that. And if you go into rc.conf, there's a lot of editing going on, but you know, it makes the system more responsive. I'm just going to change that. I made a spelling mistake last time, so I'm going to change that to NVIDIA. Oops, there you go. Luckily, it was on the mode set, which we didn't use, but you always have to be careful. Like, that. like I said last time, SysRC will not check for bad spelling. Right, we're going to make changes. So uh, they allow the time server to make 1,000 plus second alterations if uh, a clock is wildly out of sync. And to save that. Next is something which I get asked a lot, and that's auto-mounting. And this is Frank's River Maiden as well. It is a fantastic blog, but he also created this fantastic little application which will do the work for us. Right, so we're just going to install Auto Mount, and it will pull in a lot of extras. I will go into more detail on this in another video, but for now, we're just going to set up for the bare bones. So we're going to do as, edit, user local, etc. automount.conf. Eventually get there. There we go. And I don't know if there should be some entries in it, but it's blank, so we'll create it from scratch. User mount equals yes. It allows the user to mount it. Access time, no. Um, we'll put this in. I'm not sure whether we need it, but I'm going to put it in regardless. And the file manager we're going to use is Dolphin. You can put whichever one, of course. User is Robo Nuggy, or obviously your username. And we're going to put the encoding as English GP. Obviously, change it to your own local settings. And I forgot to put in car set as well, so, but it seems to work without it. Now we're going to set the locale. So if we edit uh, etc forward slash login.conf and scroll down to the bottom there I just put this little uh, backslash there we go and really all we're adding is lang well, language obviously equals English GB again put your own uh, local version there UTF hyphen 8 we'll leave it open ended and come out of it save it and issue oh right okay need to issue it properly that's cap underscore make db and then login.conf that's it now we're going to make some changes to x in it rc and i have this in mind and it really does it, it prevents uh local problems i'm just going to speed through this i'll put this in the description box down below so you can copy it if you wish and turn off the automatic screen blanking if you've got it added. Right. But now we're going to reboot the system and test it. Hopefully uh, we haven't made any mess ups and it will reboot properly. Seems to be alright so far. And here we are. Yes, yeah, very nice. Log back in. 
And yes, nice and clean. I'm just going to try a USB stick. Now, this is formatted with uh, UFS. Couldn't find a Windows one, and I ain't got a Windows machine to use uh, to create one with. So, I, nor have I got a Linux box either. So, uh, I'm just going to put this one in. Yeah, that's nice. A good sign. It's detected it. And let's see if it. Yeah, lovely. That's nice. So, it mounts it automatically and it opens a folder for it, which is uh, what we want. And usually keeps the home one there. That's a little bit annoying. We'll see if we can alter that. But yes, very good. It uh, it mounts it and opens a little file manager for it, as, as we told it to. Okay. I think we'll make some changes. If we go into console, I'm just going to zoom in there if we can. I think there's an option in Dolphin so we can have it open in a new window. I'm just going to check that. Uh, yeah, double hyphen new window, okay. So I'm just going to edit the automount.conf. I'm just going to go down to that and put that double hyphen new window. Just so it stops that rather annoying multiple tab thing. If you don't do that, it'll just open every time you open the USB thing, it'll just open it in a new tab, which is not what I want. So save that, and I don't think we have to restart anything. I'll just uh, replug the USB in. Right now, I'll plug it back in, and hopefully, does it? There we go. Yeah. So there's the Windows One FAT32 partition recognized. I'll uh, unplug it again and plug it back in. Yeah. Very nice. So it opens up a new window, and so it's not all cluttered. That's exactly what I want. I'll put in another video about how to uh, configure more file systems uh, in another video. Anyway, coming up next time, a few bits and bobs, or otherwise known as covering the things I may have forgotten, which is probably a lot, so it'll probably be a long video. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.